So very good evening to all of you. I hope you're all doing good. You have attempted the paper? No? Okay, fine. Good that you are here to just understand how questions have come and you are now going to prepare. So without wasting too much of time, let's start with Indian history section. I will be taking up 16 questions. So if you ask in the, you know, whole setup of UPSC paper this time prelims, history portion has been uh, a bit difficult. Also in terms of weightage given, the history section is not having enough questions if you compare with the last year, right? Now, this is also increasing the difficulty level because if you see the trend analysis of the last three years, how the questions have been. In modern Indian history section, we've had, you know, at least eight to nine questions, right? But this time, we have only four questions, right? This again is one of those portions which are eas which is easily handled by the students right if you compare it with the ancient medieval and culture this is the most read topic of the lot right so this is also contributing to the difficulty level of history second if you are seeing art and culture medieval indian history and ancient india more or less the number of questions have remained the same again coming back to the topics which UPSC has dealt, if you are asking or understanding the analysis, the topics have largely been on predictable lines. But when I'm saying predictable lines, the main topics being, if you know the questions, there, there is a question on literature, there is a question on Buddhist scholar, there is a question on Delhi Sultanate, even Mongol invasion is important when you're reading, you know, regional kingdoms or rise of you know, Mongols in India or invasion of India by Mongols. So this is also a relevant topic. But terminology based questions, pair based questions, the options, the way UPSC has framed is again, you know, increasing the difficulty level, right? So what we will be understanding today is after looking at the question, what now is to be done, right? Are we supposed to change the orientation towards you know, handling history questions, or are we supposed to do the same thing? That's what I will be telling you. Apart from that, even though I will be telling you the sources from which the questions have come, but, you know, when it comes to GS, you need not read all the sources which are being handled or, you know, learned by history optional students, especially for GS. But yes, topics, most important topics, whether it is for prelims or mains, or if they are having a sync with uh, means those topics I will be telling you which are important from UPSC examination point of view, right? So let's take up modern Indian history section AC So there are four questions in the paper and as I told you the topics which have been dealt by UPSC are on conventional lines if you see the last seven years of the topics which have come in UPSC. So yes, there's always an act-based question. So we saw a question on Government of India Act 1919. There was, if I don't know how many of you see our previous year analysis videos, we have, you know, this analysis done where we have generally talked with respect to history that there is a increased you know concentration being given by upsc on personality based questions and if upsc had to make questions difficult or the section difficult they would ask you know questions from not so prepared topic like revolutionary movement so there was a question on gadar party or Gada movement. However, Gada movement is important, but the kind of personalities and the options they have given, it is making, you know, question difficult. But if someone has read thoroughly, they will not find that question difficult. Almost every year there is a peasant movement. This time there was no question on peasant on tribal rebellion. So that is a change being done by UPSC. There is a question on advent of Europeans. Again, you know, the topic list which we have prepared of the last seven years. Mostly questions have come from this topic. When you talk about Crips mission, you have transfer of power as a topic, right? So there is a question on this topic as well, right? 
So let's take up the questions. The first question is question number 51 of modern Indian history. It is from a conventional topic, Government of India Act 1919. This was the most easiest question of the paper if you talk about, because one has studied modern Indian history and it's not uh, the case that one is ignoring this topic, right? So Government of India Act 1919, the question is asking you which the, of the subjects were transferred and reserved of it. If you may allow, there have been, you know, at least three questions in the last five years on Government of India Act 1919 of various kinds. So this topic was very conventional. Now talking about the question, which of the following were treated as reserved subjects? Obviously this question can be, uh, you know, attempted by elimination method as well or, you know, if you talk about, this is a very easy topic in all. So reserved subjects would be those subjects which will be kept by the British, right? So obviously they will not be delegating police, they will not be delegating administration of justice, neither they will be delegating land revenue. The only subject of the lot which could be delegated by the Britishers was local self-government, right? So this was the transferred subject, so any option having two could be eliminated, right? So this was a very easy question. And the answer to this question is 1, 3, and 4, right? Then comes your 53rd question. 53rd question, as I told you, is from, you know, a topic which is important again. But mostly now questions are being asked on personalities, right? However, the analysis now, which I'm going to tell you, may be far-fetched. Because, you know, again, Gada Party is important. There has been a question asked by UPSC in the last seven years on Gada Party again by asking the headquarters, right? But this personality was indirectly prepared by the students this time. And now this is what we call as 360 degree analysis or orientation or what you call as holistic studies for prelims or mains of an interview. Why I'm saying so? This year, Aurobindo Ghosh was in news, right? You all agree? There was, you know, uh, in PT365 also material, there was a write-up on Aurobindo Ghosh because of the high-level committee formed to commemorate the 150th birth anniversary of Sri Aurobindo, right? So there, in the PT365 class, we have told regarding Alipur conspiracy case. Now, Alipur conspiracy case happened in 1908, where both Aurobindo Ghosh and his brother Barindra Ghosh were involved. Because they were arrested, Barindra Ghosh could not become a participant of Gadar Party. That is how you could eliminate the first option. You are understanding? So, when we say holistic study, or we say 360 degree analysis, that is what we mean by this, that you will not find anything in one page or one book, or you will, you know, your mind will not give you signal to prepare. But as and when you're preparing current affairs, if you come across anything, try to do the blocks, extended blocks as well of the topic, right? So if you eliminate one, you are left with two only and three only option, right? Jogin Chandra Chatterjee was related with Hindustan Republican Army, right? So three only is the answer, Raj Bihari Bose. This question was also in our test series, this year's test series, where we have mentioned also that Raj Bihari Bose was involved in Gadar movement. So when you substantiate your studies with test series and the explanation it carries, it becomes much more meaningful uh, you know, for you to prepare in the right direction, right? Then comes question number 54, again on a very important topic, transfer of power. Crips question again has been asked by UPSC in the last seven years. And this question is also, you know, not that difficult if you've revised this topic well. Now coming to the first statement of this question, this first statement might have been attempted by many aspirants as wrong. Why? Because this, 
you know the way it has been framed it might have induced students to read it very generally so first statement says the constituent assembly would have members nominated by the provincial assemblies as well as the princely states so from princely states there was nomination of members but from provincial assemblies the members were indirectly elected through proportional representation right so this is half right and half wrong hence statement 1 is wrong coming to second statement any province which is not prepared to accept the new constitution would have the right to sign a separate agreement with britain regarding its future status this is correct now coming to this question you can find this in your spectrum you can find it in your any standard source which you are referring to so according to me this question is easy and the answer is b two only right then comes your 59th question now regarding 59th question although it pertains to an important topic advent of the europeans from which upsc is asking question nowadays specifically in the last 2 years this question is difficult if you look in the first glance but as i have always mentioned upsc checks your knowledge on chronology right so if we see the first statement first statement says the dutch established their factories warehouses on the east coast on lands granted to them by gajpati rulers now everyone knows and it's there in your ncert also about the factory set up by dutch french english right portuguese so dutch established their factory at masuli patnam right in 1605 now this question is asking you whether you know that in 1605 there were gajpati rulers or not if someone knows this then question becomes very easy and you directly come to the answer but knowing this again is a very you know a uh, difficult task but as i said if you are preparing along with newspapers and current affairs this may also become a bit easier right how so as i told you this piece of information you get in your standard sources that where the factories were set and in which year right secondly you know there was again in pt365 culture material a news item on sun temple of konark right where the content was also having you know this infographic on you know different phases of temple architecture where major dynasties were also mentioned so if someone would have again learned or had the idea or you know again they were able to recall things they would at least know that they were there in 14 to 16 century so if their rule was only till 16 century how can they be present in 1605 your understanding so that's how you eliminate the first statement by again resorting to the extended blocks you get in pt365 or any current affairs material right that's why these things become important but having said that this question is difficult reason being this you know linkage which i'm telling you is very difficult to arrive at right क्यों नहीं था मसूली पटना में इसको उस पर है उड़ीसा पाण्डिचेरी में भी था मसूली पटनम में भी था ऐसा नहीं है ना तो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग बिकॉज ऑफ दिस फैक्ट राइट सो द आंसर इज टू एंड थ्री ओनली राइट इवन थर्ड स्टेटमेंट The English East India Company established a factory at Madras on a plot of land leased from a representative of the Vijayanagar Empire. Is difficult, but everyone knows that yes, they had a factory established at Madras. Now, whether the land was leased by a representative of Vijayanagar Empire, again, re, you know, requires from you the knowledge of 
chronology or common sense. However, this question can be totally solved if you know about the Gajapati rule, uh, you know, extent. But this statement again has importance, reason being Vijayanagar Empire in medieval Indian history section is important. So the last Vijayanagar Empire, you know, which was Aravidu dynasty ruled from 1570 to 1650. Right, so there is a probability if someone is, you know, marking this statement as correct. If they know about again this thing and the Madras, at which year the factories was set up, they can again go for third statement. Right, that's why you know why I'm bringing you all these linkages so that you know, because now you will be preparing for the next year chronology of important dynasties and events is very important. Second point which I want to bring out is your current affairs and its extension in static. So anything which is in current affairs and you do and relate its fundamental or static portion with it, there is a chance that you might, you know, be able to come at the right answers more closely, right? Now coming to art and culture section, so there were these four questions from modern Indian history section. Now coming to art and culture sections, more or less weightage is decent enough. Yes, from art and culture section, topics like literature, which is also there in your mains, has been dealt. There is a direct link again with current affairs. Why there is a general perception among the students who have, you know, appeared for this paper that this paper is current affairs dominated because most of the static portions have a link with current affairs. And you can see this in your art and culture section as well. Apart from this, there is a question on Buddhist and Jain scholars. There is a question on Bhakti Saint. So, more or less, this section is on the predictable lines, at least with respect to topics given, right? But how deep they have gone and the kind of options they have framed is making this section difficult to attempt by most of the students, right? So, the first question is question number 55. Now, according to me, if you ask, this question is easy. Easy, why? You will, you know, be amazed why I'm saying that it's easy because none of the books you might have heard about. But when you do Buddhist literature, one kind of literature or text you have heard about are the Avadanas. Right? If someone has prepared something on Buddhism, they know that there is a Buddhist literature or text called Avadanas. If you are getting, if you're calm and composed in the paper, if you find this Avadana Shataka in the question, a more logical person will then see the options given if they are to attempt this question. And if you again see the options, if someone knows for sure that Avadanas are related to Buddhist text, they can you know, attempt this question by logical elimination. And the moment you eliminate three, you again arrive at the answer. So that's why I'm saying by knowing basic stuff as well, you can still, you know, arrive at the right answer in questions which are looking difficult for too many, right? But this requires that calm and composure in the paper, right? So that's why, you know, these things are important. But having said that, this question is difficult because you don't find these other books given in your regular textbooks. Now, there is a source which, uh, you know, we have mentioned time and again that UPSC is picking up apart from Mail Bhashan, that is Upinder Singh's Ancient Indian History book. Now, this question, in my opinion, and another question has been directly picked up and made from this book. So, if you see, there is mention of Trishastitika Mahapuran, there is mention of Parishisht Parvan, the books which were mentioned in the question, right? Parishisht Parvan is a very important book written by Hemchandra, which gives the history of 
earlier Jain teachers and also mentions their certain details of political history. So this Parishta Parvan book is very important, right? But as I told you that you can't really prepare this content from every single book, but is one topic which you should look after and you know do your own research. How deep you need to go in this topic, it's your call, but definitely UPSC is asking almost every year at least one question on Buddhism and Jainism. As I told you, however, this question was easy if someone knows about the Vadanas, which was very you know uh, easy to know. But if you want to know everything about it, then you need to go further higher. Now in this journey, test series helps you a lot because somewhere in the explanations you find extra content, right? That's why we always emphasize that for history or art and culture, uh, you should stick to standard sources and the test series questions which you are practicing along with the, their explanations because other than this, there is no other route to prepare this, right? Because this is not conceptual, it's more factual. And the more facts you see about Buddhism and Jainism, there is a higher chance that they stick to your mind for a longer time. right? Now again, in the PT365 material, you had reclining Buddha. So in the class notes, I have mentioned about Buddhist literature and avadanas. So if someone is knowing the basic Buddhist literature, they could easily attempt this question. right? Then comes your 56th question, a pair type question which UPSC has asked very differently and this requires precise understanding and accuracy. Which in these type of questions and specifically this section is very difficult to achieve, right? And uh, yes, this question is a blend of Buddhist, Jain scholars knowledge as well as, you know, Vaishnav scholars or Alvars. Again, if you talk about this question, Aryadev and Dignag both are Buddhist scholars. Nath Muni is a Vaishnav scholar. So only two pairs are correctly matched. But as I told you, there is a source called Upinder Singh, this book. It again carries the name of Aryadev and Dignag as Buddhist scholars, right? So probably the paper setter ha was referring to this book and those two questions which I have talked regarding the books as well as the scholars have been picked up, uh, you know, from this book, right? So that is about it. Then comes your 93rd question again on literature and Sangam literature importance cannot be understated. Every test series, every book carries something about Sangam literature and Sangam age was also in the news for the last two years because of the time period controversy it was attracting to, right? So this question is again on moderately easy level. If you have prepared Sangam literature and you know about the you know, features of Sangam literature, then this question is easy, right? Why? Because first statement says, A statement says, now the question is asking you which one of the following statements is correct. That means, first of all, make up your mind that three statements will be wrong, right? You just have to channelize your energy that out of the four statements given, which one is correct? Because the remaining three are incorrect, right? So first statement says, Sangam poems are devoid of any reference to material culture. Now, what is material culture? Material culture is, uh, you know, evidences which you gain from any literature regarding their seals, poetry, economy, right? Definitely, there has been a question even in your mains regarding Sangam literature that Sangam literature gives you more knowledge about socio-economic history than connected political history, right? So, if someone knows something around that means question also, a, stu a, a statement would have been marked wrong, right? Now coming to C statement, Sangam poems have no reference to warrior ethic. You, if someone is preparing Sangam literature, they know that there is two classification, Akkam and Puram poems. So Akkam poems are love poetry and Puram poems are poetry on war, 
right so c is also wrong right d sangam literature refers to magical forces as irrational this is also wrong because in mani meghalai you have references of magical powers right so the only option left was the social classification of varna was known to sangam poets right so b statement is correct and again this was there in our in our test series and any standard test series which you follow so i don't think so this question was difficult again uh, you know this book carries the content on sangam literature which gives you the answer of all the statements possibly given in the question right now coming to 94th question a very interesting question but very difficult indirectly you know it has link with current affairs you must be wondering again how this has link with current affairs because this you have never heard of right definitely this book you have never heard of but why you know faculties different faculties from visionize platform are telling you that you need to read newspapers along with your current affairs magazine is because of the reason that you know now questions are coming out of those news which are in controversies or gaining national opinion or public opinion now yoga vishisht is was a book translated into persian by nizamuddin panabati during the reign of akbar there have been persian translations of this book even during the reign of you know dara shiko jahangir but during the reign of akbar this uh you know a uh, scholar nizamuddin panibati translated this book in persian right so akbar is the right answer why i'm telling you again it has current affairs link because if you remember when covid just struck india and we had no president or you know steps to resolve this issue our honorable prime minister told us to do certain spiritual things what was the spiritual things or you know things which you know attracted collective consciousness were lighting the candles you know beating the thalis yes and this had again you know scientific backing why because when this was struck a former indian medical association director dr k k agarwal referred this step as logical because he mentioned a chapter from yoga vashisht book which talks about collective consciousness so if people are collectively coming together and giving message to their bodies then you have more probability of killing those cells which are you know reducing your immunity so this book was you know again quoted during this call of collective consciousness and this was mentioned in few articles it, this video was also you know uh, very popular in twitter right so that's why i'm saying that this question has indirect relation with current affairs aisa to nahi hua hoga na that one day one fine day the paper setter will think about yoga vishesh to be in the paper right so this has a uh, much more link with current affairs than any and random question being kept in the paper right so that's why you know newspaper reading that too you know uh, i again feel because there is a question often asked by these students that how do we make notes for prelims or mains for that matter from newspaper i feel note making is a very personal choice things which might interest you will not interest someone else right this news item might have clicked to someone who must have you know just mentioned in his note that there is a book called yoga vishisht and then he would have searched ki uska static relevance kya hai that in which whose reign you know it was translated or who has written that book some for some aspirant this might not have clicked but those two aspirants might have read or saw videos relating to it 
right? So that's why I say that it is a very personal exercise and why we bring such kind of analysis to you is to reinforce the idea that newspaper reading is very important, right? And, you know, this paper was mostly, you know, centering around current affairs. Even this question, if you see question number 95 on Ramanujacharya, everyone knows that Ramanujacharya was in news because of the Statue of Equality being inaugurated at Hyderabad. And a very simple question has been asked, the teachings of Ramanujacharya. So A statement says the best means of salvation was devotion. Yes, this is the most appropriate uh, you know, answer of all the options given and this is the core of Ramanujacharya's teaching, right? And again, as I told you that this was widely covered in many current affairs magazine, not only Vision. And there was a question also in Abhyas on Ramanujacharya where we, you know, very expressly mention that according to him, the best means of attaining salvation was through intense devotion of Vishnu. Right? So this was again a very easy question. Right? Now coming to next question, question number 96. Again, this has bearing with current affairs, Somnath Temple being visited by our Honorable Prime Minister. Right? Again, you just see the link. They are linking current affairs with the static. Now your task would be that you will not only read about where the visits have been to different cultural heritage or cultural places but you need to prepare the static portion also surrounding those places uh, you know visited by the dignitaries right so first statement says somnath temple is one of the jyotirling shrines yes second a description of somnath temple was given by alburinu everyone knows that somnath temple was attacked by mahmud ghazni and mahmud ghazni uh, you know, accompanied or Al Biruni accompanied Mahmud Ghazni in, during the invasions. So one and two are correct. Now coming to third statement again, which has link with current affairs, and I'll tell you how it was linked. Third, Pran Pratishtha of Somnath Temple was done by President S Radha Krishna. So it is very logical that a question would come to your mind. Are we supposed to remember this for every temple? No. Why again? This point is important. Because you must, uh, you know, go two years back when Ayodhya Temple's foundation was being laid, there was a criticism from one section that, you know, our Prime Minister should not be present during the foundation stone or, you know, doing the yagna over there. So many editorials, again at that point of time, you know, justified his act by saying that Somna Temple you know, in 1951, the Pran Pratishtha of Somnath Temple was done or installed by the president. And at that point of time, the president was not S. Radhakrishnan, but Rajendra Prasad. And if you see again the options, you eliminate three, you arrive at the answer, right? So this again requires in-depth reading of newspaper. So there is a question, no? that how do we prepare culture and history? Newspapers are again playing a vital role. Any issue, controversy, any debate coming up, you should always look behind the static portion or fundamental portion surrounding it, right? So the answer is one and two only. So this was a news that PM to inaugurate new circuit house near Somna Temple. So again, when you see these headlines, prepare Somna Temple, right? Coming to questions on ancient Indian history. So there are two questions, uh, difficult questions this time on ancient Indian history, but relevant ones again. How? Uh, so there is one question on Nath Shastra. However, to this question, uh, I would like to tell you that, you know, you need not prepare such themes for prelims, right? Because there is no end to it. Arshastra is a very important, yet very long text. You cannot remember the nitty gritties written in it, right? So this question was totally a bouncer and a question which you need to leave. For such questions, you need not prepare or change your strategy in history, right? Having said so, all the three statements given in the question are correct. But again, I'm repeating myself that 
you need not go for such type of questions there are questions in the paper which you need to leave this is one of those questions even i feel questions which are in pair format where options have been made very difficult and specific those questions also you had to leave and not waste your time on them you know the beauty of this paper was that upsc was checking whether you have that decisiveness quality in you as a civil servant when you posed a challenge that everything looks familiar can you make a decision which question to leave or which question to not leave this year's paper was a paper of this kind where you had to make very brave choices and intelligent choices to leave certain questions so that your negative marking is not increasing so one tip which i will be sharing with you in the end is different papers if you attempt specifically before prelims and mock tests as full length test or open test or abhyas please make a strategy in these lines that okay abhyas 2 was familiar how you know what kind of strategy should i adopt to gain more marks okay open test 1 was difficult so shall i attempt more number of questions or again restrict myself so this kind of judgment from the test series if you gain then you have higher probability of recreating the same thing in upsc prelims otherwise there is no you know a set pattern uh, you know given by upsc for you to understand how you are going to increase your marks right and if you compare this paper with last year last year's paper if you all have seen the randomness was more there were students attempting more number of questions because they were not knowing many so they had no choice to attempt more this year's also upsc you know just gave you on your platform familiar themes but the kind of options and facts they had asked they wanted those candidates to be weeded out who are not having a sense of judgment right so if you ask me prelims means an interview is all about this personality how you are having clarity to attempt paper or approach paper or questions whether means interview or prelims this is deciding your fate and it's better you are preparing them beforehand uh, by recreating it in the you know examination hall the same way the way you will be attempting your mocks or full length test right so all the statements are correct a person could be a slave as a result of judicial punishment yes second if a female slave bore her master a son she was legally free third if a son born to a female slave was fathered by her master the son was entitled to the legal status of the master's son so all the statements are correct but it's better to leave such questions and not reorient your strategy right then comes your 91st question 91st question is a question which is important because the shokan adepts are in you know are always well prepared by the students because of its relevance in ancient indian history you have content in your ncert also whether seven standard or rs sharma regarding this but the way upsc has framed it is making this question difficult so the holi has already been asked by upsc is in one of their options so the holi is in odisha which is correct eragudi is in andhra pradesh jogada is in odisha again so this is not correctly matched kalsi which is again a rock addict major rock addict is not in karnataka but uttarakhand right so only two pairs are correctly matched so you find major rock addicts in map form in your ncert as well so this question was easy but the way upsc gave you the options remained you know you were having very less scope to attempt this question because of the precision it demanded from you right now coming to the last section medieval indian history so there were four questions the four questions which upsc asked in medieval indian history were difficult right it's not as if they have not asked for three or four questions last year but this year again you know the number or weightage has been the same level has increased so let's see the question there's there's always a terminology based question but do you think there is an end to any terminology no but there is a pattern 
which you can adopt for future preparation and that is what when you're talking about medieval indian history there are certain kingdoms which you need to prepare and always almost every year there is a question on vijayanagar empire again this kind of coinage although spans from you know uh, different time periods in vijayanagar empire you have funam as coins being used as a medium of exchange right so again if you are doing terminologies you should prepare you know those terms which are pertaining to very important dynasties so when we say buddhism jainism yes terminologies are important when you talk about you know uh, mauryan period yes terminologies are important when you talk about medieval period mughals is important delhi sultanate is important vijayanagar is important bhakti sufi is important so on those lines themes were there but the question which they had asked is not regularly found in your normal textbook so if again you want to do research of higher kind either resort to test series explanation or prepare dynasties on your own like this right so there were two terms during vijayanagar empire used for gold coins funam and tara and these coins were issued by harihar of vijayanagar dynasty then coming to 57th question 57th question as i told you uh is on Ming mongol invasion and you know delhi sultanate time period this period is important to understand medieval indian history from the very starting right but again this topic is not prepared by the students right so you can add and understand the relevance of the topic that why upsc is asking such questions in upsc and even in their uh, you know different papers like cds or capf you see these themes right so another tip which i would like to give it to you for history especially you can consult for themes which are important in the eyes of upsc and refer cds and capf papers for history right so that you are on the same page with upsc especially in history right So first statement says the first Mongol invasion of India happened during the reign of Jalaluddin Khalji it happened during the reign of Iltutmish right so first is wrong so the only option left is 2 or 3 now again Alauddin Khilji is widely read and it's covered in the test series also and the statement which they have asked was very easy right during the reign of Alauddin Khilji Mongol assault marched up to Delhi and besieged the city this is correct right so the answer is two only however to solve this question you had to know the first statement right so two only is the correct answer it's there in your satish chandra book so this question is not unapproachable unlike funam but the topic is very important and i told you if you are to target the topics beyond the conventional themes you refer capf and cds paper conducted by upsc to know which topics you need to prepare extra right then comes your 58th question a difficult question again in medieval indian history the most difficult one kuladharan again terminology based question with reference to indian history who of the following were known as kuladharan not found in your regular textbooks terminology based you can leave this question you should not have attempted this question however the kuladharans is associated with sayyids right and it is a kind of a conical cap being worn by them which is a distinguished feature which you know makes them different uh, looking than the others right so this question was made from this book vd mahajan which is again referred by students who are having history as their option again not recommended to gs students and terminology based questions there is no end right so there there will be questions in next year also which you have to leave so you have to make a call beforehand which questions to leave all together right then comes your 92nd question 
of late specifically if you are asking me last year also there was a question on political history this year also there is a question on political history but having said this gujar pratihar dynasty is in news for the last one and a half years right so at least this question if you were to solve and prepare required knowledge about gujar pratihar dynasty but again what is increasing the difficulty level which is not giving you scope for elimination are the kind of options being given by upsc even if someone was knowing that you know nagbhat 2 and bhoja were kings belonging to you know gujar pratihar dynasty nanuk and jay shakti were unknown if upsc had followed a regular pattern of options like these then it would have given you some scope to eliminate but here they are asking you only one pair is matched only three pair is matched or all four pairs are matched right so this is increasing the difficulty level again if you were to choose whether to attend this or not in the real time examination this was again not a question to attempt right so nanuk belongs to chandela dynasty jay shakti again belongs to chandel nagbhat to boj gujar pratihar so only two pairs are matched right but as i told you gujar pratihar should have been prepared and also chandel dynasty or parmar or rashtrakutas are those regional dynasties which are important at least you should know the founders right so if someone knows that nanuk is a founder of chandel again i feel that this area is not prepared by the students generally but there is a trend in the last two years which has been followed by upsc that they are asking political history right jaise last year there was a question on the fall of gupta empire who were the regional kingdoms at that point of time existing this year also they have asked on this time period and regional kingdoms and the important kings right so this was all with respect to the questions now coming to the key te takeaways what learnings do you get when you see such kind of questions and you know paper as i said first of all you need not change your strategy you stick to your standard sources they being your ncert right yes definitely you need to now link your static with current affairs with much more concentration you know smaller news like yoga vishisht should also not be skipped right you all must be having twitter handles you all must be following something or the other in social media if something is gaining news or you know attracting a uh, popular opinion you should prepare and link it with your current affairs right then uh, you know prepare important dynasties ranging from ancient to modern Uh, ancient to medieval so if you talk about ancient you have to prepare modern period you have to prepare gupta period you have to prepare harsha if you talk about medieval you start from your you know regional kingdoms like you know rashtrakutas etc in early medieval right and then you can go to vijayanagar you can go to uh, you know delhi sultanate and moguls right now apart from this practice as i told you more number of questions and read their explanation make explanations of the test series as your source again apart from your standard sources which will give you more depth and breadth to tackle questions in history because uh, you know there is no denial of the fact that history is factual unlike economics or any other subject so you need to gain more facts but you will always be able to recall those facts only if you know the relevance why you are reading it right as i told you if you are preparing terminologies blind eyed you won't be able to remember it but if you attach learning of terminology with vijayanagar empire you will give your brain a signal that okay this dynasty is important i need to remember the terms related to it then only you recall you know terms right so that was all any question which you would like to ask me regarding preparing for history now i think this will remain the call that you should not change your sources have more in depth knowledge by solving mock tests uh, relate your current affairs and uh, do the length and breadth of the most important topics right so all the best guys have a nice day welcome
yes that will be your part of not current affairs but newspaper reading so what he's asking i'm just repeating for the online students that whether opeds or you know uh, editorials become part of your current affairs sometimes very random articles are given which has no relation with current affairs specifically in history or culture so if something is being covered in newspaper whether it is not directly linked with uh, you know current affairs any mention of any important personality or book or you know any heritage that you need to cover like yoga vashisht that was a very random thing to be covered by any aspirant but yet you are seeing the question okay so your question is ki how for how much time do you need to read newspaper and for how long you will be able to recall the information given in the newspaper is it the question or anything else okay so regarding this if someone is preparing let's say from today after seeing the paper they should not collect last two years papers right anything which is important from news point of view or issue point of view anyways it will be going to be covered in your editorial right so you need not collect the last two years paper make your day as today your first day but consistently reading newspaper is the key if you are going to give you give yourself excuses that chalo skip kar dete hain zaruri thodi hai from this day only question will come no consistent reading daily newspaper reading should be a habit to clear the upsc exam right whether you will be able to recall or not depends on how specifically or keen eye you are having to understand the relevance of the fact which you are reading you are understanding if you are knowing the syllabus if you are knowing or having an idea about mains and prelims paper across the years at least for 5 years you will definitely be able to differentiate what is important from exam point of view and what is not important from exam point of view obviously everything you cannot recall in the newspaper but uh, an intelligent eye on the basis of the previous papers uh, you know of upsc you need to be able to make difference in your newspaper reading that's why even toppers say that previous year papers understanding is very important if you don't know the syllabus if you don't know the previous year papers pattern then finding the right fact for your preparation will become difficult right yes now you need to be selective in the topic you need not read the whole book ncrts are to be you know read cover to cover for every topic but if you are going to higher end books specific topics can be chosen there's a for example i told you in ancient india uh, indus valley civilization or mauryas are important guptas are important harsha is important similarly in medieval you can go to higher level books for you know jainism buddhism vijayanagara empire moguls that is it but you need not uh, refer to these higher end books from cover to cover only specific topics topics which are always asked by upsc yes any other question you know ask me PIB is your current affairs only i'm just including it in current affairs that see what is PIB PIB is uh, the information which you are getting from the government side any initiative being taken any visit being uh, given by any dignitary dignitary to so it is a part of your current affairs how deep what facts you need to take in you have to rely on current affairs magazine to cover that topic or your analysis of previous year papers and pattern of upsc right everything you cannot remember no you need to differentiate as i told you that what is important and what is not important anything else so the next faculty will take up your science and tech and basic questions right so have a nice day guys all the best